thanks for joining me today on the London Buzz. My name is Toby Taya, and this is the show where you get to join me as I explore London's most innovative businesses. So recently, we've been having a lot of creatives, and today's not any different. We have a fashion designer, the creative director of House of Wani. Welcome to the show, Yoande. Um, thank you very much for having me. How thank are you me. doing? I'm doing okay. It's All a right. morning. Oh, Raining, good. but it's good. Yeah, the weather is... <laughs> but it's good. So just tell us a little bit about your business. Okay, so um, also money is a woman's wear label. Mm -hmm. So um, we make African prints, um, female casual and corporate wears mm -hmm. and things like that. So yeah, basically it's just about appreciating the women, you know, body clothes and all of that as well. All right. And how long have you been in the business? Um, I've been doing this for about four years now. Oh, that's a long time. Yeah. It's been a, yeah, it's been a journey. Four years uh, in London? No. In London, it's been about one and a half years now. Okay. Yes. So where were you before then? Um, I was in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So I just literally moved to London about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, started when I came here. And how was the transition like? Like, did you have to oh boy. <laughs> change <laughs> the clothes? Was, it was <laughs> definitely, it was, you know, very different, different environment, different, different mindset, different perspective. So mm -hmm. it was, it was, you know, a bit difficult transitioning, mm -hmm. but so far it's been good. It's That's been, good. It's been amazing. Have you tried making winter wear? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. No. You know, some some um, nice no. coat with Ankara <laughs> prints. That would be nice. Yeah, I know, right? But no, I haven't thought about that yet. I don't know if that's ever going to come, but... <laughs> I'm not a fan of the winter, so I'm not, I, you know. It's That's not fair enough, it's fair. I'm thinking about it all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so what exactly motivated you to, you know, say, I want to do women's wear? Because I feel like almost every girl Everybody. starts with this, oh, you start drawing clothes for your baby dolls and things mm -hmm. like that. So what made you decide to take it seriously? Phew, that's a very good question. So what made me decide to take this seriously? Um, I would say the joy of like the end product like when I you know when I started sewing it was just like okay so I like this but seeing that I could actually literally make something from like nothing mm -hmm. just seeing that end result just like oh why not like you know yeah. why not I can do this and then money as well you know <laughs> money started coming in from it was lead to but good money it was it was okay it was like okay I can get paid for doing this why not you know just go into it so yeah it was just the joy of seeing the end result and then you know money as well I'll yeah say. and what, what would you say is like um your biggest source of inspiration because i'm always curious about how creative people get to do this like i had a dj before and i was like i was asking how he mm -hmm. gets to do this it's because you can just imagine this is that like you go outside and then oh the sun is golden <laughs> and then you just think i, I want to do something golden. <laughs> how does it look like for uh, you? <laughs> well what inspires me um Hmm, that's a that's an amazing question because there's so many things that you know that inspires you I think knowing that you can actually make an impact not mm -hmm. just you know in your own world but in another, another person's world All right so even you know those times when I literally want to give up because well it's not that easy mm -hmm. um, it's just like okay so I can do this I have a vision I have a dream and it just pushes you to you know want to be the best version of yourself yeah so I would say I personally inspire myself mm -hmm. yes and to know that you're alive like first thing to be alive is a blessing so being For alive sure. not alone just makes it you know it's an inspiration on its own to mm -hmm. just you know keep going keep driving keep doing it do you ever get designers block like it does yeah that even definitely <laughs> like yeah like okay I have this fabric I don't I know what to do I have no with it. idea like <laughs> completely no idea Yes, I'm just like, okay, what do I do with this? Um, I think some days ago I was working and I just was stuck. Like, I literally didn't know what I was going, where I was going to. I had a picture of what I wanted to do, but I just could not even get there. And, yeah. you know, at those times I just take a break. But, like, yes, I definitely have designer's block. Like, I absolutely have designer's block. Okay. Definitely. And what kind of services do you do apart from, like, because you do a um, ready, ready well, what's to it wear, ready to yes. wear um, mm -hmm. thing. Do you also have maybe custom stuff, alterations? Yes, I do ready to wear and um, custom. Um, yep, so ready to wear um, is literally what I'm, like, you know, driving into right now. But, like, I do custom. I've always been doing custom. Um, yep, custom, custom wear for, like, special occasions, um, weddings, prom prom mm -hmm. not really but like wedding dinner and things like that i always the custom wear and but you I'm don't do them for free though because my yeah. mind is going mm. <laughs> free mm. 
No. <laughs> Matt doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> he doesn't pay the bills at all. So no. Um, well, there are some people that we do for free for because, well, they market the product, mm-hmm. the ambassadors and things like that. So yes, but not free. Not, you know. How do you apply to be an ambassador? <laughs> I just want free clothes. That's, that, that's all I'm getting well, to. Well, technically, <laughs> <laughs> you have to have say about um about you know over five thousand followers on instagram wow. to start with. okay and then, i have to go like buy followers just, <laughs> <laughs> like you need to like because well you know the, um, being an ambassador has been able to reach more people yeah been able to tap into your own network and For things sure. like that so mm-hmm. you know you have to be able to sell the product like if i'm not making money from you you have to be able to you know sell the products and yeah, that. yeah money comes in and that's even a, a better way of making money because yeah. it's like instead of just one source you have like this person getting different exactly channels. yeah yeah like, that's so smart <laughs> so that's I'm, I'm thinking now you said um you started in nigeria right mm-hmm. and i'm nigerian as well for mm-hmm. you guys who don't know okay <laughs> so i'm i'm thinking you know there's this um how like there's like this stigma if you're not a lawyer not you're not a doctor an engineer so how are you able to break that with your parents hmm. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna be like proper nigeria i'll be like oh okay that was um how did i break it my mom has always been very supportive to be honest like mm-hmm. she she ran a business for so long mm-hmm. and you know when i told her i was gonna go learn it because it just it was something that just came up yeah she was she was she was okay with it. She didn't. She didn't even, you know, say, "Oh, you know, you went to school for this and you're not practicing." No, she was very okay. Which was very supportive. My uncle as well. Like I had a very, very supportive family. Just, well, it was different. You know, not chasing like the regular, yeah. you know, dreams that we do chase in Nigeria. <laughs> the Nigerian dream. They were very supportive. Like, everything I wanted was provided. So it was there was support. There was definitely support. It's mm-hmm. not something. It wasn't an issue. It wasn't a major issue for yeah. my parents. It That's was, cool. It was very supportive. So uh, why would you say you chose to move to London as opposed to a place like Toronto or Misaga, you know? Good question. Because I'm thinking about moving to Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, because, well, why did I move to London? I actually came, when I moved to Canada, um, I didn't even think this was a business I was going to continue because I was doing it full-time in Nigeria. But I literally came to um, Canada for school. Like, it was just to be here for school. Mm-hmm. And that's where I came. So, so you went to Western? Yeah. What did you study? I did um, management of applied sciences okay. with data analytics. Yes, I finished that last year. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so it wasn't like, oh, I came to London to chase a business. It was just, I'm in school, I've been doing this. I can do this, you know, while I'm in school as well. So yeah, that's technically, you know, why I came to London. And I've been thinking about it, like thinking about moving to Toronto, to be honest. But I'm not sure yet. Like it's not. I'm not convinced that I need to go there yet. Because I think London has the market. It has the potential. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you can literally see growth everywhere yeah. in London. And I you just need think, to stay. Yeah, like, you're not you know, going. It's like <laughs> you need to be in that place where you can actually grow, not mm-hmm. a place that has grown, but like True. a place where you can actually. Grow yeah, I I, I, I think there's actually a very good potential here in London because I think for my first interview I talked to um some retailers downtown and okay. then I was I was also going to ask you what you think about the fashion scene in London and the potentials mm-hmm. and you know there were quite good ideas <laughs> and I'm like yeah this, okay. this is a good place <laughs> to start a business so what it would is. you say mm-hmm. that you see in terms of London's fashion scene? I know it's not London or Milan or anything. But. I know, right? <laughs> well, t- okay, first thing, like, you know, people are very comfortable around here. Like, that's what I would say. Like, there's a lot of comfort, comfort clothes and things like that. But at the same time, there are people that are very fashionable. Mm-hmm. And I think because what I'm bringing is, like, you know, pretty different. It's like African print and, like, that mix of, like, bl- um, bold colors and things like that. It's just, you know. Yeah, it's different. Just that, there's that potential, like, to, you know, it's not as diverse as Toronto, but there's still that potential because London is still pretty diverse. You know, there are, you know, plenty of people, plenty of people bring in their fashion sense from mm-hmm. different places. Yeah, so especially is, being a university city. Yeah, I feel like a lot is. of students, like, you see, the, just take a walk around campus and, like, you see different styles. Do, exactly, Sometimes I just stop and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> So, yes, like, definitely. Um, it's, it's definitely, like, a place for good for fashion. Mm-hmm. And, you know, fashion already, you know, as like a fashion design um, mm-hmm. fashion design class as well so there's just that potential for growth for fashion in london i would say okay and what do you think is um the style of your brand like who do you appeal to because I, I noticed that you're not dressing the, <laughs> the usual fashion designer the stereotypical fashion design you know they would wear like i don't know some crazy dress or wear a skirt and I then wear know. this and that but you look quite elegant so would you oh, say that you. plays into the the brand <laughs> Um, yeah, um, so yeah, first thing first, I, like, I love fashion, but mm-hmm. my fashion is simple. Like, I, 
I like the old, you know, crazy stories and things mm-hmm. like that, but I'm so simple. Like, I'm so simple. I believe in, in creating something that, it you know it de- it allows you to define yourself so like mm-hmm. you know literally it's like a canvas like yeah. it's just like something that you can build up the way you want to oh, reflect now you're your deep. own <laughs> 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 it reflect your own persona so you know you want you want to dress it down you want to dress it up you want to be you know you want to add more more layers to it mm-hmm. so I just I I focus on like the not like the simple things that that like the classic they're like the you know things that just have to be like you know you just you can literally do it the way you want to do yeah. it that's that's what i focus on so yeah, yeah it's, my fashion is very simple my style is very simple my brand is very simple my, my major focus is elegance like mm-hmm. you just need to look elegant but other than that i'm not you know i'm all about the crazy fashion or about the yeah, skirt you know, or what yeah. trousers, <laughs> like that. i don't do all that but so i appreciate people much. that do that as well <laughs> You know, everybody's got their own style, so mm. I definitely appreciate that as well, to be mm. honest. So, yeah, mine is just like really simple. Like, really so you, simple. it's not like the trendy type. Like, I was, yeah. I was going to ask, how do you stay grounded in this culture? There's like one trend this yep. week, another trend next yep. week. How do you, you know, focus on who House of Wani is, and mm. you don't just keep changing? And <laughs> so, so at the end of the day, the consumers are confused. Like, I, I know, know, right? Yeah, um, yeah. I think when when I started, my focus was just that simple that you know simplicity that thing that you know allows you to find your own person that's always my focus so regardless of trend i wouldn't say i don't incorporate trend in my you know in my style in my work and things like that mm-hmm. but regardless of the trend i still just ensure that i you know remain true to what i believe in to what my style is mm-hmm. so in everything you still you still see like a like a bit of my you know my person reflecting that style so mm-hmm. i guess just you know knowing myself enough to know that okay, this is even though it's a, this is a trend, it's gonna you know it's probably gonna you know mm-hmm. pass away like it's yeah. very fleeting. So even it's a trend, I still put that classic, that elegant, that theme that I've always used to define as a money. I mm-hmm. still definitely was putting every piece that I make. Yeah, so, that's very important. Yeah. So what would you say is most important to you as a person? Whew. Um, can you elaborate on that question? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like okay, maybe for me. Um, it's just about being like I can relate to what you're saying. You know, mm. being true to yourself and everything. So even if it's in school, a mm. business, whatever, yep. I just and have everything. to be true to myself. And you know, people have to see whatever I'm doing on just who I am as. Yep. Okay, this girl is unapologetically <laughs> Toby. Myself. I know. So what would you say is yours? Um, yeah. And don't so. copy mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> now you're putting me on the spot. <laughs> uh, what would I say is mine? Um. Hmm. Okay, first thing, I think first thing that keeps me grounded is definitely God. Like, you know, believing in something greater than you, mm-hmm. you know, having that anchor and something bigger than you, something that, you know, it's just, it keeps you grounded. It keeps, it keeps you, you, like, it's like, okay, you know, regardless of whatever I've achieved or whatever I've come from or whatever it is, mm-hmm. there's a bigger person, there's a bigger picture, there's, you know, there's something bigger than me. So that definitely keeps me, um, me. And then what else, like, experiences, all the things I've been through definitely keeps me you know grounded as well so i always just you know it's my experience is my personal experience it's nobody's experience is my experience that's true so yeah that i would definitely say you know keeps me me definitely if that's you know the answer to the question no, I, it, it, I think it, I'm it <laughs> no it, you're, you're on track <laughs> if, if you were going off i would just be like stop no stop <laughs> cut cut <laughs> oh my god but yeah um we'll be right back we're just gonna take a quick break don't go anywhere oh thank you Here at Radio Western, we love live music. Bands and musicians are always coming through our studio, playing some sweet tunes for us that go live to air. Tune in to PS Airwaves on Wednesday, June 28th at 6 p.m. to hear Western's own country rockers, Five Oceans. Five Oceans have been hard at work developing interest in the local scene and their own unique brand of country and soul-flavored rock. This up-and-coming band is sure to wow you with their vintage meets modern charm and catchy tunes. Live to air on Radio Western. Local music, new music, great music. Knock, knock. Who's there? Interruptive marketer. Interruptive marketer. Interested in grabbing the attention of others with mediocre jokes and marketing tactics? Want to sharpen your social media skills? Heighten your volunteer experience? CHW is recruiting for our marketing and promotions team, and we're offering great experience in promotional events, sponsorship recruitment, social media, promotional writing, and graphic design. Come by the Come by the station in room 250 of the UCC or visit us at chwradio.ca for more details. Be part of the growing arts scene at Western and in the London community. We promise we won't interrupt you.
All right, we're back now, and you're listening to the London Buzz. My name is Toby Taya. I have Yewante Oduwale <laughs> from House of Wani, and we're just talking about the journey, you know, how everything is going. She's a fashion designer and the creative director of House of Wani, like I said. So we'll just continue right from where we stopped. Okay. So what would you say has been your major highlight in your business journey? Yeah, good, very, very good question. Because there's been, like, you know, there's been major, major highlight. I think the most recent I like that I have will be um, getting the email from African Fashion Week Toronto oh, that wow. I was nominated as an Imagine Designer. Oh, wow, like, that's that big. Was, that was big. That was like, you know, I woke up and I wasn't sure. Like, I literally, <laughs> I wasn't sure that you know, it was you the right. You had to clean your Yeah, eyes. <laughs> like, I woke up, I rolled from my bed and I, you know, turned. I'm like, okay, wait. <laughs> Did I just get a mail? Like, I, I've just been here like a year, a year mm. and a half, and you know, I'm being recognized. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, that was like a major, major, major highlight. I wouldn't even deny that. And um, another major highlight, well, to be honest, every time I finish a dress, every time mm. I see the end product on somebody, it's like, wow, every time, I did that. like every <laughs> time that I finish a dress, put it on somebody, see the smell, see them radiating it, mm-hmm. it's always, I can't even. I can't, you know, describe this. It's always a high point, always. And I think the, you know, the even better part is that when I see them wear it again, when I see them rock it again, I'm always like, hmm, who made that dress for you again? It's, uh, <laughs> Say it's my like name. Literally, <laughs> <laughs> like I get a buzz out of it. It's 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 amazing. So there's been major major island. Even this this you know being on the radio with you told me mm-hmm. it's definitely was an eye point. I was like, okay, oh. I like literally this is my first radio interview. Like you know whatever like this is amazing so yes um there's been you know really really nice eye right, points and being on the cover of a magazine yeah that's true uh, uh. yeah <laughs> in london like yes on the cover of a magazine um as you a guys i have magazine. a celebrity in the studio <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> it's a journey <laughs> yeah so just being that as well has also been you know eye points as well there's been there's been Nice, nice um, eye point, I would say. That's cool. Absolutely. It's always nice to reflect. I feel like most times you tend to forget things. And when you, you, know, you know, you think about things, like, yeah, I've not done I too did, bad. Yeah, <laughs> honestly, like, you know, I was going over just a couple of things yesterday because I was like, a bit nervous about this. Mm-hmm. Yesterday, I was like, okay, let me, you know, think about this. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wow, <laughs> wow, okay. You know, you always just push yourself to be, you know, think like you haven't done enough or you yeah. haven't done anything. But I was just like, oh, wow, wow, that happened. I've done that. This happened. Like, it's like, okay. Mm-hmm. You haven't done bad for yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You have it's to appreciate it. Always and w- w- what would you say is your, um, or has been your deepest learning points? Like, <sighs> I don't like to call them Deep. failures or anything, but, <laughs> you know, just things that you'd learning be like, points. I wish I did this differently. Oh, boy. Hmm. <laughs> oh, you're perfect. You, you, you know. I know I'm not. Oh boy, <laughs> stress me. I'm it's okay far. to be perfect. You don't. You don't have to feel bad about me. <laughs> well, no, I'm very <laughs> far from that. I'm human, so I don't think I'm perfect. I wasn't created perfect, so I wouldn't even claim perfection right now. I would love to, mm-hmm. but my learning experience, God, <sighs> I wouldn't say. You know, I call them learning experience, but then there were low moments. There were like mm-hmm. really low moments. Um, you know, that point when you don't believe in yourself, like you don't believe in your value mm-hmm. and someone else makes you feel like your value is nothing. So for me, it was like making a dress for somebody, you know, turning out the price, you know, going over everything and then being paid less than what we discussed. It was like, it was very, uh, uh, trust uh, me. Uh, 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 no, no, no. Like the Nigerian in me oh. already like, no. <laughs> I don't know if it's a Nigerian thing. I don't want to, you know. Give me my (laughs) money. (laughs) Give me. No. Sorry. Go on. (laughs) So, yeah. It was like a really low point. You know, that point when someone makes you feel like a value, like your, you know, everything that you put into it, everything that you, you, you know, you, 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 you know, you desire to be is actually nothing. Like you're not what, what you, place on this yeah so that nah, was a man, very low point like, it was i know right like, i didn't know this. <laughs> it's so not you it was a learning experience like okay wani you need to be able to differentiate between cheap people and people that are your customers like you know it's not every, everybody's not your customer at the mm-hmm. end of the day everybody is not you know you have different different customers so everybody's not your customer so being able to know that so that was a learning experience you know being able to actually know you know it's, you're not begging people to love what you do. You're not begging people to value yeah. what you do. Yeah. You place your value on what yeah. you do. And if you believe strongly in yourself, don't let anybody, you know, just, Word. you know, <laughs> push you aside or push your effort aside or things like that. So, yeah, that was like a major learning learning experience for mm-hmm. me, I would say. And it, 
trust me, every day is always a learning experience. Every call that I make is a learning experience. Yeah. I've made a choice that I've never made recently, and I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, <laughs> like I was scared. Uh, the funny part is, every choice that I make, I'm like always scared. Like I'm like, but if you're not, scared. if you're not nervous, I don't think you do a good job. I know. I know. I, for me, I, I've learned to embrace that um, nervous feeling as mm. you know, I'm going to do good. Yep. When yep, I know I'm nervous yep. and I'm, I'm going to be good. I so, agree. Yeah. I completely I agree with that. Like. Yes, that's so true. So, so true. So how do you go about um, marketing? Let's talk about the business aspect now. Whew. Okay, so yeah, that's been a bit, it's been a little bit, I would say difficult. Not mm-hmm. yeah, because, you know, the marketing, funny enough, I've been here for like one and a half years and, you know, I've I've made some waves, I would say. I would, you mm-hmm. know, sort of pat myself at the back right now. Yeah, um, but it's been a little bit difficult. You know, anything as a one man is not sustainable, to be honest. So. Mm-hmm. Marketing has been a bit challenging because I have a regular nine to five job as well. Mm-hmm. And being able to combine that and combine my vision, my dream as well, has been a little bit hectic. But what I do is I network as much as I can. I network mm. as much as I can reach out. I reach out like I just literally reach out. We call it fans in mm-hmm. Nigeria. Like <laughs> I literally reach out. Like I feel like you have something I don't have. Yeah. I feel like you have a network I can tap into. Mm-hmm. I feel like you know you are you're going to be interested in what I have regardless mm-hmm. of whether you know it or not. Yeah. So I always just reach out. Just you know put myself out there. What's what's the worst that can happen? Exactly. Feel, okay then I'll start again. Like you know literally so that marketing has just always been it's still myself right now. I'm still trying to, I'm trying like you know get to the point where you know have more people to do the marketing mm-hmm. do the you know business and everything um but like what i just do with just myself right now is just networking meeting more people you know spreading spreading the name because once you meet one person they're spreading you to yeah they, you know they, word of they, mouth they, is like, very powerful with mouth, service like, kind of honestly, business honestly like yeah. word of mouth can never go out of fashion mm-hmm. as far as i'm concerned mm-hmm. so like you know it's like placing the idea in their mind and then they spread the idea it's like an idea virus to be honest mm-hmm. they just spread the idea for you and you know you're going far work without even really doing anything so yes, um, for me, my marketing tool, the major marketing tool I've been doing is natural. Yeah. So how 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 do you do that practically? Do you like um go for events? Yes. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Um. All about events. I love events. <laughs> um, I haven't gone for as much as I want to go, to mm-hmm. be honest, because of school. When I was in school, and now that I'm working, mm-hmm. but yes, event and also you know you know you know people that like the uh, forefront of everything. So mm-hmm. reaching out to those people as well, you know, just incorporating them in like a brand, you know putting a post on Instagram or Facebook or whatever yeah. and like tagging them, you know, that you know, they don't know about you, but they, they see that and, you know, they can't, you know, when they say a good thing, they cannot deny that they say a good thing. Like, yeah. you just cannot deny that it's Better recognize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah, events and then just reaching out in every way that I can, to be honest. In true social media, true meeting them, you know, at the event, keeping up with that relationship mm-hmm. is what I've just been doing. Yeah, that follow up is very important. Follow up as is well. very important. All right, so like um, <laughs> pertaining to the fashion industry, something that's very, you know, it comes up a lot. I don't know whether it's just a Nigerian fashion. Well, I'm sure it's everywhere, <laughs> but you know, this issue of plagiarism, I don't know if that's what it's called hmm. when it comes to fashion, but <laughs> where do you draw the line between getting inspiration from a designer and then and just, just copying copy him? Them? That's a very strong question because, like, literally, because fashion is very encompassing. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, they're just like trends. Like now, you know, you can't because you can literally see like Zara Kluth as like an H and M. They're almost the same. Thing. Yeah, but like, you, I <laughs> it's like the only difference is I the button. I know. It's just like yeah. So I don't know if it's <sighs> what do you draw the line between, between copying and being inspired? <laughs> Good question. Or do you even think it's such a big deal? It is a big deal because while well, somebody else, you know, sweat, they actually, yeah. you know, you know, they went through the effort of thinking of getting inspiration and mm. then you just copy outrightly. Hmm. Yeah, it is a big deal. Honestly, it's a big deal. What would you do but if you were, work, uh, you were walking past a store and then you saw your blouse on a mannequin? Would you go in and be like, take that down? Like, <laughs> that's, that's mine. That's mine. <laughs> I, I would. I would do that. I slave for this. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? But no, um... To be honest, I really don't know where you draw the line between mm-hmm. plagiarism and copying because those things, like, the what I've realized is that people have the same, people have the same ideas. Yeah. Like, it's, it's amazing, but people have the same ideas. Like, you can literally think of something. Someone else has thought about that same thing. Yeah. So, at that point... And really, you can only think of so much, yeah, right? Like, like, you're not you going can, to wear exactly. the moon, so... So, I... It's a big deal. I don't believe in, like, you know, seeing a design, copying out right. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. believe in it. Even if you're being motivated by a design, there's always something that you can add to it. There's always something that you can, you can, you know, make it yours, to make it your own design. Yeah. So I'm just, 
like when I do mine, I get inspiration from everywhere. To be honest, like you know, everywhere. Who are your favorite like, designers? All these, ooh, my favorite designer. I love Michael Kors. Like literally, it is is one of my favorite designers because he has a simplicity. Mm-hmm. There's that. There's yeah. that casualness. There's that in and then DVF, of course. Like DVF has that. That easy going, that easy breezy, and that's mm-hmm. you know that's what I define my brand as as well. So those are like one of my favorite designers. I'm um, going to Africa, Lisa Falabi, your Jesus, elegant, yeah. like you know she just yeah. gives a Diola Sego. I can't even, I can keep going and going and going. There's Orange Culture as well. So like all these amazing people have inspired me. But there's no time I you know see a design from them and just literally just want to just copy out right or things yeah. like that. So I always just you know believe in putting your own persona like yeah. your own brand your own definition of your own brand into yeah it. that's true yeah and what would you say are your future plans for your brand do you, do you want to go to london you want to go to milan you know ah, well it would be an honor to to walk down a catwalk in milan showing your brand showing your swag, showing mm-hmm. that thing that you believe in strongly, it would mm-hmm. definitely be an honor. Like, it, would, it wouldn't even be something that is like, oh, child's play, or it would be a privilege, <laughs> mm-hmm. honestly. So, yes, definitely, I would love to walk down um, runways, like London, Milan, and things like that. Like, I would love to um, walk down those kind of runways and my designs and my, you know, everything. Mm-hmm. And also, I would like to reach more people. So, for future plans, it will be, I'm already here in London. I'm still thinking about settling down, here, settling down here in London. Mm-hmm. So it will be getting a storefront, like you know, having okay. a place where people can walk in, yeah. pick up clothes off the rack. Also, you know, being able to also get um, custom made with, um, for them as well for like the special occasions and things like that. And also being able to show the world, you know, major catwalks, major places, major, major fashion shows. Yeah. Being able to show the world what you can actually do. Just chasing the dream to the extent that the dream can go. <laughs> Honestly, I can't even I define. Feel you. I know, you know, it's important for you to have a, you know, like a clear vision. But yeah. at times, like the dream takes you to so many places that you yeah. can't even define. So I see like a... It's like the dream is chasing you now. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> like it's going so far. So as far as you can go. Because you... You are the only limitation to your dream. You're the only mm. limitation to yourself. So Deep. as far as you can go, as far as you can see, yeah. is definitely as far as, you know, I want to go. All right. So rounding up now, what are your tips for, you know, fellow entrepreneurs or people who are aspiring to tow the path of your kind of business? Hmm. Yeah. Um, so what um major thing, the very first thing, I went to this yesterday with my friend. The very first thing I would, I would say absolutely will be to believe like mm. wherever you are whatever you do whatever it is like whatever it is that you do just believe first thing first believe in yourself believe you can do it and then start mm. like yeah that's start. a big that's a big one like, too because is, you can dream and I, dream and know, then you never you can, do anything I swear, but you never you never take the step but just start like with whatever you have yeah whether you have the money whether you have the means whether you have the resource but it's just you by yourself. Start mm-hmm. because you don't know how far. You don't know how. You don't know what's going to come along. Like that's true. God makes ways like where you cannot even think about. It makes it, it pulls resources for you from where you haven't even imagined. Yeah. So yeah, start like believe in yourself. Start, and you're going to hit rock bottom. Like you, we need to be honest there. Like mm. you're going to go low. Like you're going to give up. Go low. But at that point, <laughs> when you give up, pick yourself up. Yeah. It's only you that can pick yourself up. It's only you know, regardless of what else you know, people say or whatever. It's only you that can pick yourself up. So pick yourself up, and then information is key. Like open yourself to information. Read books, learn from mentors, learn from people. Even if you can't meet them in person, you know, get their knowledge, get their pick their brains in whatever way you can pick their brains. Messages, tapes, books, all of that stuff. You know, just who are your mentors? Hmm. My mentor. Hmm. Somebody and me, mm-hmm. <laughs> major, major mentor. One of people that made me say, yeah, he's great. He was one of people that made me start, like honestly. And my mom is my major mentor. Like, oh, geez, shout out to her mom. mom. <laughs> and my uncle as well, definitely, definitely my mentors. And there are other mentors, but like somebody is like major, like is key in a lot of my decisions. So yeah, um, yeah. So basically, you know, believe in yourself. Start wherever you are. Just start, and then pick yourself up. At every time that you, you know, you think you, you're about to go down, you're about to give up. Pick yourself up. You're the only limitation to yourself. So, yeah, boy, wonderful. As far as you can see. <laughs> 
Yeah. So before we let you go and before we talk about how we can reach you, we're going to play a game. It's a quick game. Okay. Don't worry. It's, it's not difficult. So I'm going to list some designers and some notable items. And then you tell me I, if it's the item, tell me the designer it's related to. Okay. If it's a designer, tell me what they're known for. I hope I don't fail. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so too. I don't want to fail. Okay. So the first one, Chanel. Number five, Chanel number five. <laughs> I thought the same. Okay, um, red bottoms. Liberté. Yeah. Dear La Sego. I sure okay. <laughs> Wedding dresses. Who do you think about? <sighs> Ooh, I can't remember his name. Zero <laughs> Murad official order. Oh, and Elisab as well. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to remember that name last night. Yeah. yeah I'm glad Elisab. you said it. <laughs> Polo. Um, Ralph Lauren. Of yeah. Course. Vivian Westwood. <laughs> Crazy English woman. Yes. <laughs> yes. And the Nari blouse. That's me. That's why. <laughs> you did Aww, good. I, I'm you. proud of you. <laughs> I try. All right. So now just before we sign out, how can we reach you? You know, social media, yeah. any way we can contact you. Even Aww. your email, your date of birth, your, you know, oh my your God, address, anything. Okay. <laughs> Personal. I don't want you to, you know, <laughs> identity to get some stalkers. <laughs> okay, so, um, well, um, social media basically that's one of the major places you can reach me mm-hmm. on Instagram. It is Owls of Wani, mm-hmm. Owls of Wani, mm-hmm. you know, and then on Facebook, it's Owls of Wani as well. It's my page, Owls of Wani on Snapchat. It is Wani on and I sell my product on Etsy. Um, it is House of Wani. So it is www.etsy.com slash shop slash House of Wani. So that's where you can get all my products, you know, you know, purchase them, support the brand, support the dream. No. And follow on Instagram, follow on Facebook, follow on Twitter. I don't really tweet, <laughs> but follow <laughs> on Snapchat and all the, you know, amazing social media out there. So that's basically where you can easily reach me at. And, you know, again, the product is on Etsy, House of Wani. That's great. Well, thank you very much for coming thank on the you. show today. It was it a was, good discussion. <laughs> and I wish you all amazing. the best with your oh, business. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for joining in today. Again, my name is Toby Taya. I was just speaking with Yewan Day of House of Wani. This is the London Buzz, and I hope you join me next time. Thank you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your videos as well.